glad to see you back. Um, as I said last time, we were going to talk about spending time with God. And that's actually a little section. So we're also going to look at how anybody can be transformed by the Holy Spirit. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as I have spent more time with God by reading and studying his word. So that's, I mean, that's how we spend time to get to know God, right? Is by, he left us his word. That's who he is. And that's how we can get to know him and spend time with him. I have been challenged to love my husband, children, and people in general better. And love shown in my actions. When I got married, all the premarital classes and the words in the marriage ceremony said in marriage, it is now the three of us. Me, Tannen, and God. That concept was not very real to me because involving God was primarily when we attended church every week. When I silently prayed by myself to God at night and when we prayed to God together, mostly during hard times, right? I mean, and it's just unfortunate, but when we feel we have nowhere else to turn, a lot of times, you know, we call on the Lord instead of basking in his glory every day. But I didn't see how drawing closer to God could actually make me a better lover of people. And I, I mean all people, not just people um, that I'm close to. It's like the blindfold was removed. How could I not love better when I come closer to God by reading his word? Because he reveals it so astonishing clear in his word that his message is love. So when we are in his word, we can all experience the power of the Holy Spirit, allowing us to get a little closer to the image of God as shown through Jesus Christ. So now the next um, section in my letter is um, just speaks to how anyone can be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Not not just the holier art thou's Christians. I mean, anybody, if they accept Jesus into their heart. So no matter where you are in your spiritual journey and personal relationship with God, my hope is that through my story, you will draw closer to God because as long as we live in this world and these sinful human bodies, we can never be too close to him. This letter is not intended to judge or shame anyone because only you know where your relationship is with Jesus. Um, just as I am the only one that knows where my relationship with, with him is. And even doing this letter, I mean, that's the whole thing. It doesn't make me any better. I just felt God put this message on my heart to share. And so that's why I feel I've been called to do it and why I wrote the letter. But it doesn't make me any better than the next person as far as we all struggle with the sins that that are in our lives and so even with all that I have learned and experienced we I still struggle you know and the key is not to struggle alone we have God's word and his spirit it's free to us all we have to do is use it I'm writing this letter to inspire you to live a life for Jesus nothing is impossible with Jesus a great example is the Paul the Apostle Paul is regarded as one of the greatest followers of Christ and one of the most important people in the Bible in spreading Christianity. He wrote almost half the books in the New Testament, something I didn't know until Bible study, which was like a couple of years ago. Um, and that makes me ask myself, where was I all those years doing all those religion classes? Being that I grew up Catholic and went to Catholic school my whole life, surely that was covered. I was passing, but I wasn't digesting God's word. Growing up attending Catholic church, I vividly recall the phrase, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, or a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I heard it Sunday after Sunday, but what I didn't fully grasp is that eh, they were just that, letters that Paul wrote to the people in those cities. For example, the Corinthians were people from the city of Corinth, and the Philippians were people from the city of Philippi. I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't realize this before, but I can bet I'm not alone in my ignorance. He wrote these letters to rebuke them of their sinful ways and to encourage them to keep the faith and stay the course for Jesus no matter what. And at that time, people were getting killed for following Jesus. But who was Paul? So let's talk about Paul. Before Paul, he was Saul, a man who arrested and persecuted Christians. So he was killing Christians. He was actually on his way to kill Christians when he encountered Jesus and was converted to one of the most devoted followers of Christ. Um, and you can see Acts chapter 9 to read about Saul's conversion in, in more detail. So this man took several journeys to spread God's word, was beaten nearly to death a number of times, stoned, imprisoned, robbed, homeless, hungry, and eventually killed. 
You name it, he suffered it. All in the name of Jesus. To bring people to Jesus. If that's not proof that we could all be transformed into the likeness of Christ, no matter what our past, I don't know what is. So it's not about what I've done, but what I will do. The key word here is do. Because at the end of the day, it's what my actions say about me that is the true picture of my heart and who I am at my core. Am I for Jesus or for self? Do I love the world or do I love God like I say I do? God makes it crystal clear in the book of James that if we are friends of the world, we are an enemy to him. And that's seen in James 4, verse 4. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. So I will stop there. Next time, we're going to be looking at faith. Without action doesn't mean much, which of course means we can all say I believe in Jesus, but you know, it's that term I'll ask for um, forgiveness rather than permission type thing, you know, just taking God's grace for granted. So saying what is having my faith if I'm not walking and living it out. So I will see you next time. Thanks.